So this piece of code, I just want to say who it was from, was from Direxy uh, on the Discord server. So let's give it a look, see. Um, <clears throat> you see my screen there, Jason? I can indeed, yeah. All right, so we're pretty much looking at this for the first time. I did pull it up in Pastebin and just kind of gave it a glance. But um, I guess I think the more of these we do, we'll probably come come up with like a step-by-step -step process to looking at code. But um, just off the bat, I can see Ryder is telling me a couple things. You brought this up earlier. <laughs> yeah, this yeah. Call right here. Yeah. Hmm, what does this blue line say? <laughs> Repeated property access of yeah. built-in component is inefficient. That's that call to this dot transform dot rotation. Yeah. Now it's not as bad as it used to be. So I will I will put a caveat there. Um, so when they architected um, the, the the kind of programming in Unity in the past, they wanted to simplify a lot of concepts. And so one of them is that Unity is built on a component model. So behind the scenes, you don't really think about it. When you see mono behavior, a behavior is a thing that exists on an object. And an object has multiple behaviors. And you kind of intuit this as you use Unity, but you don't really think about it as there, an object is a list of behaviors. And so what happens is every time you write an innocuous statement like dot transform or dot rigid body or um, dot renderer, any of them, you have to basically search the object and find the one that you're looking for. And so if you write this dot transform dot, this dot transform dot, every one of those constitutes a small search. Now it's not a big search and, and Unity, if memory serves, caches some of these now. It never did before, but it, it's some of them they cache now. Transform might be one of them and I'm not entirely sure. But um, to be safe, I still like to, to cache the transform before I do a lot of work on it. Uh, I was going to see if I could... I had a look myself. It, it, the... it, it goes to the C++, so it's, it's, you're not going to be able to see the actual... Um, see the call, fortunately. Yeah. Um, and again, same goes for the camera. I think we mentioned that before, camera.main. That is a horrible call to game object that find object with tag main camera. Do we have any of those in here? No, <laughs> so, but but yeah, so it'll it'll actually have to search for it. If it doesn't have the main camera tag, it'll throw a null exception. And if it does have the, if it does have it, you're still doing a search to find it. Yeah. Uh, so long story short, if you're if you find yourself writing this dot transform dot this dot transform dot this dot transform dot, even if it's just in the update, put a transform, cache it once, and then use it for the duration of, of what you're doing. So we should be able to refactor this. Um, let's see. Let's see if I can do it in one shot. Uh, there's also one other thing to, to keep note of. There is something called transform on the object, obviously, for that to be recommended. So cache it with the same naming convention of underscore or something to that effect. Wait, so, oh, okay, yeah, true that. Um, uh, right, so... on, a, on a side note, I, I like to see that there's underscores as a, as a little tip for people who aren't familiar. Uh, that, indico <laughs> that, that underscore is recommended, is, is a indicator that it is a uh, class scoped object. So it lets you know this thing is, is a property that exists on this class. So it's very useful to say, this Django piece has an original position. If it's not using the underscore, it's saying this is a property I'm using internally to work with stuff to calculate some other value.